one of the best ways to learn to fly a mini quad is to practice in a simulator. But if you have a, a transmitter like one of these that doesn't easily interface with a computer, then you've kind of been out of luck until now. But Betaflight 3.4 is here to save the day. Betaflight 3.4 gives you the ability to use a flight controller as a USB interface to a transmitter, any transmitter. Stay tuned. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and this is FPV Know-It-All, where you learn everything you need to know to get your quadcopter in the air, keep it flying its best, and enjoy the great hobby of FPV. And one of the best ways to enjoy the hobby of FPV is through a simulator. Simulators are not only great tools for learning to fly, they're also just a lot of fun. They're a fun game that you can keep enjoying with your friends, even after you've gotten over that initial learning curve. And let's be honest, simulators don't fly perfectly, but they're really good for getting over the first five hours of flying, the first 200 crashes, instead of having those initial crashes in a field, crashing, costing yourself money, maybe even losing a whole quad. You can have those crashes in a simulator where you just press the reset button and you're back in the air. And by the time you get to the point where the simulator, the, the, the deficits in the simulator's physics really matter, you've already gotten, become way, way better as a pilot. Simulators are awesome, but there's a problem. It's not always easy to interface your transmitter with your computer to let you fly the simulator using your actual transmitter. So what can you do? Well, you can use a Xbox or PlayStation, just a regular game controller, but that's actually really bad. Those are designed for playing video games, not for flying quadcopters, and they, they don't have the precision, the little short joysticks. They just, they don't have enough precision to, and, and they're spring loaded, so they don't really work. The throttle doesn't work like your actual transmitter. And your muscle memory just isn't there. You want to practice with the same transmitter that you use to actually fly in real life. Game controllers aren't great. You can use this P Pro Pro Plus, well, I forget the name of it. It's, it's this audio interface where you take your the output of your trainer port on your transmitter and you run it into the audio interface on your computer. And yeah, it works, but I've tried it. It works really badly. There's tons of jitter, latency. It's very imprecise. It's really awful. Now, if you're lucky and you have a Tyrannus or a, I think any of the FreeSky radios, they have a USB port on them and you just plug them right into the computer. And that's great. They just act like a joystick. And they're not the only ones out there that do that. It can be a little bit annoying to have a USB cable hanging out the back of your transmitter though. And there are various wireless interfaces as well, most notably for FreeSky and, Open T uh, and, and uh, Spectrum radios, but they cost a little bit of money. What about everybody else for whom those solutions don't work? Well, now there's an answer. Betaflight 3.4 lets you use any flight controller and receiver, any receiver that could be radio link, could be fly sky, anything that you can hook to a Betaflight flight controller, and it will act as a USB interface showing up in your computer as a game controller. And I'm going to show you how to do it. The first thing you're going to need in order to use this feature is Betaflight 3.4, and at the time of this video, it is in release candidate. It hasn't been officially released. Release candidates are generally pretty safe to use. You can test them out, but there may be a couple bugs. Very shortly, there will actually be a release of Betaflight 3.4, and that won't really matter. But you're going to go into your Betaflight configurator. You're going to go to the firmware flasher, and as of today, you'll need to check the show unstable releases option because it's in a release candidate. You're going to pick your firmware version, and you're going to flash Betaflight 3.4 to your flight controller. Now, there's another requirement you need to be aware of. You need Betaflight 3.4, but you also have to be running either an F4 or an F7 flight controller. There wasn't enough program memory on the F3 and F1 boards to include this code. If so you're running an F3 or an F1, you're just not going to be able to do this. If you're running an F4 or F7, it may be as simple as just plugging in USB, like so, to your flight controller. And you can see that on this flight controller, which is a CL Racing F4, when I plug in USB, the receiver lights up. 
Some flight controllers will power the receiver from USB, and that's the best case scenario because you just plug it in, and if it's a spare flight controller like this one, you don't even need the XT60. And if you're using one of your quadcopters, and sure, you could use a flight controllers in a quadcopter, it doesn't matter, then you just plug the USB in, the receiver powers on, and you're good to go. But many flight controllers do not power the receiver when you plug in USB. You're going to need to plug in a LiPo. And in that case, you're definitely going to want to be careful. Take your props off. Take your props off, you doofus. Don't plug in an XT60 and do this with your props on. And then the other thing you're going to need to be aware of is if your video transmit, if you plug in a LiPo, your video transmitter will turn on. And if it's sitting there at 800 milliwatts, just smoking away on the desk while you're playing DRL simulator or liftoff, that's not good. So the best case scenario is to find an old spare, burn. maybe you lifted a pad and it's no good anymore, but you haven't thrown it out yet. Find an old spare flight controller or gosh, maybe even spend 20 bucks on, a, on an Omnibus F4 or something from Banggood and just wire it up to a receiver and use it as your adapter. But you can use a flight controller that's in a quadcopter if you so desire. Then you're going to connect to your flight controller and go to the CLI and you're going to type set USB on underscore HID underscore CDC equals on and save. And then what'll happen is this. Here you can see that we've got a new USB game controller. It's Seal Racing F4. <laughs> That's a joystick and it's my flight controller. <laughs> and then sure enough, after performing the exact same controller setup as you would in your simulator with any other transmitter, boom. We're flying. I'm holding my Tyrannus in my hands using my Crossfire receiver or my Free Sky receiver or whatever receiver you've got, and I'm flying in the simulator. Now, the question that you guys all want to know the answer to is how's the latency? And the answer is eh, it's a little hard to tell because, frankly, simulators always feel just a little laggy and a little floaty. So I haven't really done like an A-B, oops, I crashed. I haven't really done like an A-B comparison to compare it to a direct USB connection, but it felt okay. Felt no worse than any other simulator. Didn't feel any problems with lag. Felt fine to me and I had a good time flying it around. And frankly, even if there was a little bit of lag and I'm not saying there is, for many of you guys out there, this is just the best and only option for connecting your transmitter to a simulator. It's fantastic. Now, if you are using a flight controller that is in a quad that you're actually flying, when you're done with the simulator, you're going to want to go back into the CLI and do set USB HID underscore CDC equals off. And I'm not sure what the downside is of leaving that on when you're flying, but it's, just, it's probably good practice. Just turn it off when you're done. And that's it. That's it. It's just that simple. Just plug in the flight controller, input that command, and you've got a joystick that you can use to fly simulators with whatever transmitter you use. Spectrum, Radio Link, FlySky, you name it. As long as it can connect to a flight controller and fly a quad, you can use it to fly a simulator. Sometimes people complain and they say, I wish Betaflight was more like, like Race Flight. Race Flight just focuses on the flight characteristics. Betaflight gets so bogged down with bells and whistles and features we don't really care about. And yes, there is some truth to that. But a feature like this is a great example of where the Betaflight development philosophy, somebody just came out of the woodwork and said, this is a cool feature. I'm going to make this happen and submitted it. And it is so cool and so helpful to so many people that they did it. I just couldn't be happier. So that's going to do it for this video. Go play in the simulator. Grab one of your spare quads. Grab a spare flight controller. Go do this right now. Enjoy. Happy flying in your simulator.